Hello again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster. Welcome you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. You know, as we've been talking about the last few weeks, there's an awful lot of championships being decided in the Alabama High School Athletic Association this time of the year. As a matter of fact, we've done had three champions crowned actually four. We've had the uh, tennis coach from Mountain Brook, the boys tennis team, win a state championship. We've had the girls soccer team from John Carroll win a state championship. And we've also had the boys and girls soccer team from 7A Oak Mountain defeat Auburn High School in both of those games. And so the Oak Mountain girls and Oak Mountain boys have come away with state championships as well. As you know, we try to recognize as many state champions as we can. We'll continue to try to do that. Tonight, uh, our guests are gonna be uh, a 7A baseball team that is competing for a state championship this weekend and a 5A softball team that's gonna be competing for a championship. And so there are a lot more championships out there. We don't know how many we will end up having, but the Birmingham area has been very fortunate, outstanding coaches, outstanding athletes, which means we bring home quite a few state championships every year in the springtime of the year. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. The coaches uh, that we've got coming on tonight are hoping that their teams still have their best softball and baseball left to be played because if they can do that, both of these teams will be capable of coming home with a state championship. And we've got a couple of other teams. Uh, one of them is Pelham and the other one's Helena that's going for baseball championships as well. A lot to take care of. We'll get it done. Folks, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Our first guest of the evening. Don't you go away. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. Good driver discount, multi-car discount, good student discount. Helping you save money on car insurance is just part of the service you get from State Farm Agent Jack Traffinstead. Whether an accident or a simple question, Jack and his staff get you the help you need. And that's the value only a State Farm Agent can provide. Call Jack Traffinstead today. 40 million drivers already know. Nobody gives more discounts to more drivers than State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. Take your taste to a different place. It's the taste of hamburger heaven. A taste of heaven is always best. And now you know that you're blessed. Give your taste a whole new spin. Bring your friends and come on in. Take your taste to a different place. It's the taste of hamburger heaven. And folks, welcome back. Uh, in this segment, as we talked about earlier, we're going to be visiting with a an assistant softball coach. The head coach couldn't be here tonight, but uh, we're happy to have the assistant coach for the Hayden, I think it's Wildcats, isn't it? That's right. And uh, their softball team is in the uh, Class 5A Finals, and of course, Heather Carter is the assistant coach there. Coach Carter, good to meet you and good to see you. Uh, we'll start this interview off like I do with all head coaches, and even if you're an assistant coach, tell us a little bit about your background, what has led you to be the assistant coach there at Hayden. Okay, well this is my third year at Hayden and what led me there was um, I landed a job there three years ago. I teach science and help with uh, softball and volleyball 
and uh, I live in Hansville. So actually, I drive a little bit, but it's it's, it's a good drive. Yeah. I enjoy it. Where did you uh, play uh, softball? or? I did. I played at Wallace State in Hansville, and uh, they recruited me right out of high school. I played at Hendersonville High School in Hendersonville, Tennessee, really? and graduated in 2004. Oh, okay. So um, going into this season, I'll let you talk about this as well. Um, you've been there how long now, did you say? This is my third year. So you were familiar with the girls, a lot of them. Going into this year, uh, what did you expect or what were your expectations from this year's team? This year's team is very talented um, and they have all the heart. And so I had very high expectations. I know Coach Simmons and Coach Mikey had very high expectations. And so far they've met them all. And the one last thing that we want to see is uh, getting that big blue this week. Friday. Well, you know, that's that's what it's all about, and I think uh, that every coach, and probably the athletes feel the same way, but the coaches in particular, one thing they like to do is, is have their team peak at playoff time. And, and having said that, I know ex uh, except for your area games and what have you, usually the head coach is in charge of making the schedule, right? Yes. And so what I would ask you from y'all's schedule, because I have no idea what it was, um, a lot of times, uh, teams and players can improve by playing tougher competition, whether they win or not. Sometimes we get better after losses if we play very good teams. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's easy to be a winner or it's easy to put a lot of patches on schedules. And I don't mean that in a negative way because I don't know the, didn't know the schedule. But if you put teams on there that you can handle very easily, it's hard, it, it's easy to be complacent and say, hey, we don't have to work as hard as we thought we did. But the bottom line is, is somewhere you're going to meet good competition. If it's not in your area, it's going to be out of it someplace. And, and um, I've always been of the thought that uh, teams get better, both mentally and physically, by playing the tougher competition does. How do you guys feel about that? Oh, absolutely. We totally agree. Um, and he even talked about, Coach Simmons talked about today in practice, that he is chased the good pitchers, um, pitchers that throw hard, pitchers that have a lot of um, off-speed pitches and to challenge our hitters and to make our hitters the type of really good caliber hitting team. And I would say that we have a very good caliber hitting team because I was a pitcher and I pitched to them and I know what they can hit and they can hit it all over the strike zone. It's amazing. When I see that's the, the next question, logical question, when you talk about a team's makeup, like in softball as it is in baseball, you got hitting, you got defense, you got pitching. Yes. And I don't care what anybody tells you, we love the home runs, we love the a lot of runs scored. Yes. But if you're playing, you actually love a pitcher that can shut down a team that may be loaded with star hitters, but good pitching will stop good hitting every time. Absolutely. And so uh, I know the emphasis is on all, in all th on all three parts of the game. Talk about that from your team standpoint and uh, how you feel like your team has excelled or played in those areas. Okay, well, um, we've got an outstanding ace pitcher. She's actually here with us today, Charlie Miller. Uh, she's got speed. She's got a great curveball. She's got a great screwball. She uses those um, all the time. Um, and then we've got depth to our pitching staff, which is a lot of teams don't have that. Um, in our area, there's another team that's going to be down there with us, Springville. They've got two pitchers, and it's a seventh grader and an eighth grader. And their eighth grader is their ace. And she can hit her spots, which is great when it comes to pitching. Hit your spots, get your outs. Um, but to have depth to our team like we do, we have six total pitchers, and we use four of those for varsity. It is, I mean, it's just like a coach's dream. I was going to say there's no yeah. uh, substitute in, in softball, baseball for good pitching because most, uh, most coaches are going to build their team around that. And if you've got great hitting, that's a plus. If you've got a great defensive team, that's a plus. But if you've got those pitchers that can keep you in ball games and hold the other teams from scoring, you're way ahead in the game, right? All right. Now, one thing I want you to talk about, and I don't know how long you've been playing softball, I would guess – what, 15, 20 years? Just about, yeah, that's about right. But, but what I'm saying is talk about the evolution because 
I remember basketball, for instance. I remember when the defense was on one side of the court, the offense on the other side. And, and young ladies, uh, softball players, I remember when it was slow pitch. And, but girls have come light years in their sport, I think. And one of the things I think that have gotten them there is now you have those scholarships for softball players. And so that's got to be a motivating factor. But talk about that change, that evolution from the slow pitch to where now you have legitimate pitchers, for lack of a better way to put it. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, it was, let's see, about 1999, slow pitch changed to fast pitch here in Alabama. And um, back in the day, if you had a pitcher that could bring some kind of heat, you could shut everybody down. Well, now you have a pitcher, if, let's say, if our pitcher, the only thing she had was heat, and she couldn't hit her spots, or, or she couldn't. Ha she didn't have any off-speed pitching. She couldn't throw anything. Um, Good hitters catch up with that. Oh, don't absolutely! They? Anybody can hit a fastball down the middle. <laughs> I mean, anybody. And so we've seen hitters just become disciplined at the plate, and um, and we've developed ours to become disciplined. And, and so that has changed dramatically, even over the past five years. Well, I tell you what, that's the one thing I have noticed that not only, and I, and I can tell you this, where I notice it even more so is I see more colleges. And, and, the, and the main uh, player on that, those college teams are those outstanding pitchers. Well, I tell you what, uh, Coach Carter, first of all, often good to meet you. Secondly, uh, you're at a place where you never know when you might get there the next time. So we have to take advantage of it when it comes, right? All right. And so from your standpoint, is the, the team ready to play its best series of the year? Absolutely. We're ready. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world. And uh, win, lose, or draw, this has got to be a wonderful experience for you as a coach and the, and the players as well. So I will say good luck to you. Thank you. And then if nothing happens and everything falls well, maybe a state championship's waiting on you. All right, thank you. We'll take a quick break. If we come back, we're going to visit it with three young ladies, very instrumental in the success they've had thus far. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. OK. Does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky! Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdow in Trustville today. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. And folks, welcome back. And as you can see, I have very outstanding looking young ladies that can play some pretty good softball, let me tell you. Sitting closest to me, Kaylee Smith, a senior. And Kaylee, are you an outfielder shortstop? Yes, sir. Okay. And then Charlie Miller, a junior pitcher, right? Yeah. Pretty outstanding. <laughs> yes, you are. And then Brooke Meadows, a junior second base, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, girls, as we start this off, first of all, and I'll start with you, Kaylee. Did you think that you and your teammates had the, um, the talent, the want to, and everything it takes to be as successful as you've been this year? Well, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that we would have made it this far, but I knew we had the potential and I knew we had the heart and the want to because a lot of us were a part of the 2013 state championship team. 
And so we know, we've tasted what it's like to have that victory. So I think that's part of why we have so much want to and heart in the games that we play. When you're right about one thing, if you are a champion, regardless of when it happens, that there's a bullseye on you, especially the oh, next yeah. season. Everybody's gunning to get you. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that's going to be a more mo motivating factor for them, but it should be more motivating factor for y'all as well to know that they're coming after you with their best shot, yes, right? Uh, Charlie, the, the question that I would ask you is, first of all, being a pitcher, I'm always intrigued by pitchers. And what I'm going to ask uh, you, and uh, don't be shy, <laughs> are you a pitcher or are you a thrower? And the reason I say, I'm, will you answer that question, then I'll back it up with one. What's the difference? That's what you'll find out in a second. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to trap you. You think you're a pitcher or a thrower? I'd say pitcher. Pitcher? Well, good. That's pitcher. the best answer. Okay. <laughs> because let me tell you about the thrower. And this is why I like to ask. I love to ask baseball players this. And I've wondered about you ladies. Uh, do you like for somebody to dig in on you at the plate? Are you afraid to throw inside? Not at all. I love oh, throwing okay. inside. Well, now that's where the thrower comes at. And I mean, there's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a purpose pitch. You're not really trying to hit somebody, but you're letting them know that you're on the inside of that mm -hmm. plate as well. And so you don't have a fear of that, right? Not at all. Well, good. Well, and there's another important aspect of a team sport. And Brooke, I'm going to let you talk about this. And it's called team chemistry. Now, I don't know how it is with ladies, so you're going to have to tell me. With, with guys, I know how it is. I played team sports with guys. And sometimes the chemistry, when there's good chemistry between you and your teammates, you become better individually. You become better as a team. You help your coach sometimes because, believe it or not, a coach, let's say we got a, 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 one of your teammates that don't particularly like to do what they need to do. And sometimes it's easier for you guys to get and have a little conversation with that person mm -hmm. and say, look, this is what you need to be doing, this is what we're doing, you're gonna do it. And you do the coach a favor sometimes because mm -hmm. you can police yourself. But all of that adds up to what we call team chemistry. And the better the team chemistry, the better we can be not only as an individual, but as a whole. So talk about the team chemistry with you and your team. Um, I think we have a great chemistry because we always have a good one each year. We always have our team softball party at someone's house and we all just have a good time together. We eat, we play games, mess around with each other and stuff <laughs> like that. But then there's those moments us girls have like with the bows, our <laughs> uniforms, but you know we still get over that mm -hmm. and we all come together as a team and play together. Well I tell you what, I don't know what the secret is and what all y'all have done this year, but whatever it is you've done it right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, another question I enjoy asking, and uh, y'all would know this a whole lot better than I, but is there a certain team that you enjoy playing more than another? And if it is, who and why? And we'll start with you, Kaylee. Okay, um, I would say it would probably be Mortar Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, uh, they're, they're a couple of stone, uh, stone throws up the road, right, or down the road, oh, whichever yes. way you want to look at it. Mortar Jordan, that's very interesting. Yes. Charlie, how about you? Definitely Jordan. <laughs> De now, definitely Jordan. And the way you said that, it makes me wonder. I wonder if any of those Jordan hitters have tried to dig in mm -hmm. and, and you don't mind brushing them back? No. Is, is that a wake-up call for you? Yes. Yeah, okay. Brooke, how about you? Jordan. Jordan, well, I be. That's sort of like Hoover and Vestavia, right, or mm -hmm. Clay and, and Trustful. So it mm -hmm. sounds like y'all got a, a, a little family feud. <laughs> the Hatfields and the McCoys, right? Yes. All right, girls, another thing that I like to ask, too, is uh, I've met y'all for the first time tonight. You're delightful uh, young ladies. And there's probably something, either you're superstitious or maybe there's something that we don't know about you that, that your close friends might, but uh, me, someone meeting you for the first time, or some of your friends may not have any idea. It could be something like, um, maybe you like to write poetry, or an example, <laughs> or maybe you like to sing in the shower, because all of us are... I mean, we're wonderful in the shower. You open that door, 
and things people aren't throwing at us, right? So, but you get the general idea. What if you might have a hobby or a superstition that we don't know about. And so, um, Kaylee, hey, do this to you. We're going to start off with you. Uh, okay. Um, uh, well, my superstition would be that every game we have this sign, and we have this uh, breakdown that we break down to before every game, and it's PLC, Play Like Champions, and we have this sign, and it's this quote. It talks about regardless if we win or lose, to play for our teammates and not for ourselves and to play like a champion. And if we don't have that up in our dugout every game, I feel like it's gonna be off, like something wrong is gonna go happen. Incomplete. Yes, it's, something's gonna happen that's not right. So I'm very superstitious about our son. Yeah, hey, well you women are superstitious. <laughs> much already. You know, well, that's, that's neat, that's neat. Now, Charlie, how about you? Um, my superstition started during basketball season when Coach Simmons painted 32 seconds on the wall and 32 seconds, or 32 minutes is during a basketball game, but we hit it every time we go out, and it's not really 32 minutes during a basketball game. It's like 32 minutes of your life, but your entire life. Like you give it all during that one game, just let's uh, sell out. Well, so. I tell you what, any kind of motivational factor that you can use mm -hmm. is a positive thing. And so that sounds like you, you girls have the same goal in mind, doing whatever it takes to get there. Brooke, how about you? Mine um, would be our Bible study we do during softball, because just softball it's just not just all softball you can bring God and get closer to your friends just by doing one sport so us doing our Bible study means a lot and every once in a while we have to bring a little hellfire and brimstone <laughs> <laughs> okay all right now girls listen the, there's a couple of things that's involved in um, your experience as softball players in high school one is the academic side because I try to tell all these young student athletes that if you don't qualify in the classroom, guess what? We don't make it to the softball diamond. So academics are important. All right, having that <coughs> said, first of all, what, what's your favorite subject? What do you enjoy most about the academic experience in your um, high school experience? Katie, we'll start with you. I enjoy English. Really? And I would say I enjoy English because, well, I like to write and I, whenever I talk I use a lot of detail, whenever I tell a story I have to tell every detail of that story. So whenever I'm writing it's easy for me to write a lot at one time and it's easy whenever you have to write 500 word essays. So <laughs> it just comes sort of natural to It does, to you. it comes natural to me. That don't surprise me, <laughs> that does not surprise me. Charlie, how about you? Um, math, because I'm a perfectionist and the math has to be perfect and I think it helps me pitch in because pitching it has to be perfect and so that's well, how I like it. Well, it's uh, close enough to perfect for the coaches it, and, and I got a feeling you've been, what's your record by the way, you know that? 33 and 5. Okay. You pitch every game? <laughs> um, well, our record is 33 and 5, but I don't know my record. Oh, you don't know what yours is? Oh, no. well, that's what I meant, your record. Oh. Okay. Team record matters the oh, most. Oh, <laughs> that, that is impressive. Uh, Brooke, how about you? Mine would be math, too, because I just like solving problems. I like just knowing, and plus we get to use the calculator, <laughs> so it helps me. But. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know what you kids would be without all these gimmicks. And uh, they're, they're not gimmicks, they're just little helpmates, if you will, because uh, Snapper still lives back in the old age. I, like, <laughs> I, I live under this KISS theory, keep it simple, stupid. So believe me, I don't like all this technology. I'm one of these, I was the same yesterday, I'm going to be the same tomorrow and the same today. But that's great, that's great. Well, well girls, um, the, the, another question I enjoy asking, and uh, I get different answers, but um, uh, this is a very important question. To this point in your young lives, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? And we'll start with you, Karen. Um, I would definitely say it would be softball, Coach Simmons. Like, he has taught me so much more about softball over the years that I've had him in basketball and softball. And just having him at school, if I'm stressed about something or something's weighing on my heart, I can definitely go to him about it. And he will tell me, not from a Coach Simmons point of view, but like just his personal point of view. And as a man of God, like he has inspired me so much to become a better person. They prepare you, the coaches, for life after they high do. school they just do. as well, don't they? How about you? Um, my dad, I mean, he got me this far. He started when I started pitching 
and he knew everything about it and so he taught me he well, helped me get where I am now well, good for you bro I would have to say coach Johnson because she was my junior high coach but she still comes up to me and says hey how have you been and asks me how my day was <laughs> and like softball on junior high she taught me everything and plus my dad did too but she <laughs> taught me you know how to be a teammate how to be a good teammate how like my corrections and stuff like that she's just a good person well i tell you what girls you look like it that y'all are all very real rounded uh, off the field and, and on the field, you know, and, and that's important because not everything in our life happens on the field. And let me tell you, uh, winners aren't always the big winners because in every game there's a winner and a loser, and I think we can gain. It's awfully easy to be a winner, but it takes more to pick yourself up and be the kind of person we want to be in the long mm -hmm. run. Well, you got one more series, girls. Good luck to okay. you. I wish y'all luck you. in the world. And Thank maybe you got that Thank championship you. out there, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming to visit. Folks, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We're changing sports. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Ted Townley in Homewood today. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back in this segment. Like I said, we changed sports. We went from softball to baseball, and we got one of the most successful baseball teams in the Birmingham area. And of course, Pat Hamrick and his Thompson Warriors, a 31 and 16 season thus far coach, and going to the championship series, that's gotta be very gratifying. Well, it's the first time in school history, and uh, you know I've been there 20 years, right. but this is really exciting for me and also our team. Well, I'm sure it is, and Coach, for having said that, uh, I always like to ask the coaches, give us a backdrop of uh, how you started out in this uh, coaching business and eventually ended up at Thompson. Well, I played uh, baseball at the University of, uh, Livingston University, which is now the University of West Alabama, and uh, when I finished playing, the coach asked me to stay on as a graduate assistant, and I was actually a major in business at the time, and once I uh, graduated, the only graduate program they had was uh, in education. So I wanted to stay on. I wasn't ready to get out of getting jobs. So uh, I stayed there and was a GA and got a master's in education, actually special education. So I've been doing that for 22 years as a special ed teacher. So it's just funny how things happen. I would actually have a, probably an MBA if it had a, a master's in business. Well, I tell you what, talking about you and your kids, this year has been um, one of those special type seasons. And coaches, we start talking about your team. What were your expectations coming into the season this year? Did you, did you envisualize in this group being as well, successful? Uh, two years ago, we were 38 and 10, and we had, were ranked number one in the, in the state for probably three-fourths of the year, and 
we got in the first round and didn't, Spain Park beat us out. And then uh, last year we were 33 and 15 and ranked number two in the state. And uh, uh, we got beat by Spain Park again in the first round. So I guess our players saw the disappointment that we went through and we actually graduated 10 guys last year and or 12 players and 10 of them went on and played in college, either junior college or four year school. So uh, we were coming into the season thinking that we had a chance to have a good team, but we wasn't sure they were all young. We really only had uh, one returning starter in the field and a couple of pitchers that threw a lot for us. And, you know, we just, we really got hot early, swinging the bats, gained some confidence. And uh, when we got an area play, we swept uh, Hoover and that really gave us a lot of confidence. And we ended up going five and one in the area, won the area and then you know, we got past Mount Brook in the first round, and since then, we really have taken off. Well, I tell you what, it seems like it's been one of those gratifying years in as not only has the team um, played as well as those past two teams, but the, the most important thing, and we talked about this with the softball coach, it's got to be the same with the baseball, but I want you to talk about it. For a coach, is his team peaking at the right time, and of course, playoff time is the right time. Well, you know, and it's, in the back of our mind, we were the first round has always been a hurdle for us. And once we got past the first round this year, I mean, it was like a breath of fresh air. And Vestavia, which was number one in the state, came in, and uh, we beat them in two. So I mean, it was just like we were relieved to get there. And once we did, it was it just we played great. Well, I, I tell you something else that I wonder about too. Um, talk about the three aspects of this year's team, and in baseball, they are. Pitching, hitting, and defense. Right. Well, pitching, we have uh, two of the pitchers are, are with us tonight, uh, Stephen Poplin and Colin Lilly. Uh, they are what, a combined 15-1 and one for us this year, and they've thrown extremely well. And, uh, you know, they don't overpower you. They just mix it up, and they throw a lot of strikes. And well, I, then, I tell you what, Coach, um, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but the thing this passed my mind just for a second talking about uh, your, your teams, Thompson seems like really in all sports to be picking it up right now. And so that's a well, compliment to all of you It coaches. is. I think uh, as a school system, uh, you know, being a city school system has helped us out. But, you know, we've always been competitive in baseball and the other sports. Football has always been a little bit behind. And with a commitment they've made now, I think that program is really fixing to take off. Well, and then to pick up, and I didn't mean to interrupt your train of thought, but from the pitching to the hitting. Right, from the hitting standpoint, uh, going into the year, we, we knew we had some young players, but we knew that uh, we would have a chance to have nine guys that would be tough outs, have a chance to swing the bat. And, uh, you know, we've done that after the, probably the Coleman series, which was probably about the third week of the season. When they come into our place and we swept them, uh, when they were number one in 6A, we were unranked, and we really just hit the baseball extremely well, one through nine. And, you know, that gave us the confidence that we could do that, and they kind of carried it for the rest of the year. So we've got nine tough outs in our in our. Well, lineup. is hitting like anything else? It can get contagious? It is contagious. And, and, you know, to give you an example, when we played Mountain Brook, uh, we were actually in, we got beat game one. Game two, we're down three to one with one out and no one on. And... Uh, you know, we're down to two outs for our season. And the next thing you know, we get a couple hits, we end up scoring nine runs, and we go up 10-3. to three. So it, it is contagious. And it was like that this past weekend. We had 16 hits in game three this weekend against Spartman. And then how about that other aspect? you got a pretty good defense behind We really do. We're, we're fielding about uh, 945 as a team, which is really good. Uh, and most of these kids are, are juniors. You know, we, we have four seniors that play a lot. And... Uh, you know, we got a good nucleus returning for next year also. Well, and, and uh, the obvious question then, and i got a feeling I know the answer, but it sounds like your team is as healthy as it can be, no injuries of any kind. Uh, we're, we are healthy. We're ready to go. And so uh, are, are you one of these coaches that uh, I know you have your area plays mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that you have to play, but do you, um, uh, you set the schedule for your team. Right. Do you believe in playing sometimes tougher opponents because well, whether you win or lose, you're going to be well, better for you know, it? I've been there for 20 years, and we play as tough a schedule as anybody in the state, and, and that's year in and year out. And, uh, you know, it's not about records. It's about trying to get these kids ready for area play, and hopefully through area play, getting ready for it, you get ready for the playoffs. And, uh, you know, 
it's not about wins and losses. It's about getting your team ready to hopefully compete for a state championship. When they, I know y'all end up playing uh, Smith Station, right? We do. In the final, do you know anything about them or well, seen them on uh, film or anything? Really, I know they're they're really getting hot at the right time. You know, earlier in the year, I think their record was not great. They finished second area behind Auburn and. They beat Auburn in the second round, which really surprised me because Auburn's a very talented team. As a school, we've never played Smith Station. This will be the first time I've, since I've been here that we've played them. And, uh, you know, I know they've got a couple of really good pitchers with, with a great arms, and, you know, hopefully we can get up there and continue to swing the bat and just not be phased by the pitching. Well, I tell you what, from an outsider, and the reason I say outsider, the high school connection I have is with Vestavia, and so right. doing the play-by-play -play in football, but knew Sammy Dunn very well. And so the one thing that, that that lets me know, you guys have played the kind of baseball that baseball powers the last two or three years as good as anybody. Yes, sir. And you seem to be peaking at the right time. You're where you want to be in the finals, so the rest is let up, left up to fate, whatever that is. All you can do is the best you can, and if somebody beats you, then you just – acknowledge that because right. they're going to have to beat a pretty good team. Yes, sir. Wish you good luck, Coach. All right, well, thank and you. thanks for coming to visit with us. We'll take a quick break and we come back. Four young gentlemen, very instrumental in the success Thompson's had thus far, but the season is far from over, folks. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, oh, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. Good driver discount, multi-car discount, good student discount. Helping you save money on car insurance is just part of the service you get from State Farm Agent Jack Trappenstead. Whether an accident or a simple question, Jack and his staff get you the help you need. And that's the value only a State Farm Agent can provide. Call Jack Trappenstead today. 40 million drivers already know. Nobody gives more discounts to more drivers than State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And folks, welcome back. And like I said, in this segment, we're visiting with uh, four young athletes as Hep Thompson to be an, have an outstanding season thus far. One series from being over, which means they're in the semifinals, and they could be champions this time next week. If not, they'll end up second place. We know what they want, but guys, and the first question I'll ask, first of all, let me introduce these youngsters, Zach Bremer and um, Zach, your senior, and left fielder shortstop, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Stephen po uh, Poplin, senior designated hitter pitcher. Yes, sir. Correct. Uh, Colin Lilly, uh, senior outfield pitcher. Yes, sir. And then finally Heath Haskins, a junior center fielder. Yes, sir. Okay. Now that we've got to know each other a little bit better, first of all, and we'll start with you, Zach. Going into this season, did you think you and your teammates um, had won the ability or were ready to step up and have another outstanding season after? What Coach and I talked about could have been two really disappointing years, even though they were great years. But did, could, did you think you could do it again this year? I did. Uh, I just knew, like, going into the season that the seniors and the juniors, they had real good chemistry with each other. We have all at some point played together and have always just had success when we played together. Well, you know, uh, Zach, you made up a, a good point. And, Stefan, I'm going to let you elaborate on it a little bit. There's one word in sports that I think is um, not given enough credit, and that word is chemistry. Now, here's the deal about chemistry. One, it can make you be the best you can be, not only as an individual, but as a team. Or if you have bad chemistry, if you, uh, people don't want to pay the price 
to what it takes to be the best you can be. Or you might have a troublemaker that has more influence on the team than they should. Sometimes, believe me, you players help the coaches a lot more than the coaches along those lines. But with those thoughts uh, in mind, uh, Stephen, talk about the team chemistry and what it's meant to you and your team. Uh, this team's it's really been different than any other teams in the past two years. I mean, this probably has been the hardest working team we've had. And there is a different feel to our chemistry. It's, uh, every guy has each other guy's back. So when you screw up, I mean, you're relying on the other guy to pick you up, and they usually come through with it. Well, now, Heath, I'm going to let you go a, a step further on this. Um, if there's a, a player that's maybe not pulling his weight or maybe doing something negative instead of positive, do you guys have any problem policing that player? Oh, no, no, sir, not really, no. Because I was going to say, a lot of times y'all as teammates can do more than the coach to get somebody to straighten up. Yeah. So, um, you being a senior, I mean, do, do you have a problem in getting in somebody's grill or, or a group of you in somebody's grill if they're not doing what's expected no, out of No, sir, not really. Um, I mean, if somebody's looking at somebody has that attitude, you know, just uh, we all know that the whole team or just you will go in their face and just try to yell at them. Now, Colin, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, Usually if somebody's not pulling their weight or doing their job, just say, hey, man, pick it up, and usually they'll pick it up. Well, and one thing that, that I'm, on, I'm curious about because of where you all are, and you all are in 7A, um, who, and we'll start with um, you, Zach, who is the biggest <laughs> rivalry that you all have, or who's the team you look forward to playing against the most every year? Um, I probably always look forward to playing Pelham the most not only because it's our biggest rival, but they were like our best friends growing up and we always played together or with teams together and always played against each other growing up. Let me tell you something about rivalries. And, and one, sometimes I think people forget, and I tell people about Alabama-Auburn, Vestavia Hoover, well the same thing I think Thompson and Pelham. The only difference in you athletes is the color of the jersey you put on. Because you made a great point a lot of times those people at those schools you went to church with, you grew up with, you had relationships with, and, and, and I've talked to people about this before. Uh, you guys, y'all don't hate your opponents or nothing like that. Y'all just want to win. But the people I think that cause the most problems are the fanatics. It's not the fans. The fans want to see a good game, so y'all do the best that you can do. But no, nobody hates each other. It's a sport for my goodness. But, um, but that's, a, that's a good analogy, though. Uh, Stephen, how about you? Who do you look forward to? Uh, I, I do look forward to Pelham, but this year, was, since there was that class change, it was more my focus was more towards Hoover because they were in our area, and that's a team we had to get through to get two playoffs. Right, right. Okay. Uh, how about you, Colin? Pelham usually every year, but like Stephen said, Hoover being in our area, I look forward to that game this year. Now, Heath, you got a different answer for us? Uh, no, sir. It's Pelham for me, too. Really? Well, you know, that's sort of the natural thing. I, I tell people, you know, the rivalry of Estavia Hoover, Clay, and uh, uh, Hewitt, that reminds me a lot of you guys. And generally, it's that neighborhood rivalry, the one you've known all your life. And it don't matter if you end up swapping classifications or nothing, that they're still the same folks. Um, Another question I, that I enjoy asking is meeting you guys for the first time. Uh, I, of course, I've seen Zach a, a couple of times, but meeting you guys for the first time. Uh, baseball players can be superstitious. Wonder if you have any superstitions, or is there something about you guys that I don't know that would surprise somebody if you told them? For example, uh, some of you good at singing in the shower? Because once that shower door opens and we come out, we all sound horrible. <laughs> or one of you big old husky guys like you guys like writing poetry. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. In other words, what would you tell me about you? Maybe your closest friends might know, but people in general don't. Is it a superstition or is it just something, maybe a hobby you have that we wouldn't know about? We'll start with you, Zach. Um, uh, every superstition I have kind of just stays between like baseball players uh if you have a good game you don't wash your undershirt or maybe wear the same pair of socks um i had a i had a real good mentor in my life 
when I was little. He kind of really taught me the game. And he, he always wore number 44, but he died going into my eighth grade year of baseball. So every time I go up to bat, I always write 44 in the dirt. Yeah. And uh, I've always done that every at bat I've had. Well, that's since neat. Now. That's neat that some, but one, it's something different, but two, it's recognizing somebody that meant so much to you. How about you, Stephen? Uh, I do have a couple of superstitions. Like, we're playing good. I may skip a shower, just keep, keep the mojo going. Now, 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 wait a minute, now, Stephen. We don't have to really get that personal, but that, that's interesting. I mean, that's very interesting. I mean, the, the about one that. true way to lose friends is skip a shower, too, yeah. Okay. It's not often. It's just every now okay. and then. Well, that's nice. But, it's not often. That makes me feel better. And, uh, besides that, let me, just, let me slide over just a little right. bit. <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, besides that, it's just like keeping the same routine, like, Get your prayers in before the game. Do the same stretches, same exercises. Get your muscles warmed up, all that stuff. But, you know, it's amazing to, to talk to different athletes. There, there's, some, there's something screwy about us athletes. We're, we're in a world of our own sometimes. And, but yet it's one that everybody, all the other athletes, you understand it. How about you, Colin? Uh, definitely got to listen to some Hank Williams, Jr. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, there ain't nothing wrong with old Hank, Jr. Uh, I'm a country guy myself. Uh, I'd have to listen to Conway Twitty. Okay. <laughs> but, but let me tell you this. Either one. We live in a wonderful country, okay? This is something y'all can share with your, anybody you want to. We've had about 46 presidents. Is that right, Coach? No, it's 146. Okay, 46, 47, something like that. That's how much I am. We're going to have one king. One king in this country. Elvis. <laughs> you, you like that? You know that I was like coming. That. How about you, Heath? Um, I mean, I only, the only superstition I can say is that is with the team, every, before every game, we, I usually do handshakes with uh, most of the players on the team before we, uh, we usually go to the corner and we usually pray and we break it down loud. Yeah. Before every game. Well, hey, that's, that, that's sort of neat. Now, I know you guys are, are well aware of this being athletes. You don't qualify in the classroom. You don't make it to the baseball diamond. And so that's academics are, are important. But, but this, um, this high school experience, uh, talk about, and we'll talk about baseball because that's the, the sport that's in. And Zach, we'll start with you. What is it that you've enjoyed most about your baseball experience? What is it you've enjoyed least? Mm. Mostly, <clears throat> I've enjoyed, uh, not everybody gets to play with, play for, uh, great coaches and uh, playing for Coach Hammer has really been a joy and uh, he's a good guy and he really teaches you how to play the game right and Coach Walker um, you don't get to say you grow up I mean you play for somebody that has been in the pros or at a high college level and that's just pretty good um, at least has to be the running that I've gone through yeah <laughs> uh, my, my JV and ninth grade coach we used to joke around and call ourselves the Thompson track team, how much we ran. Like we'd be running in neighborhoods, trails. Well, I'm glad you was able to get that off the chair. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's good. How about you stepping? Uh, I mean, like Zach said, it's been a blessing to be part of this team. It's really something that has been dear to us. Uh, probably the worst thing is losing. I hate losing. I'd go through anything not, not to lose a game. You show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. That makes sense. Think about it. You have to think about it a second. Oh, okay. Colin, how about you? Uh, the best has been just getting to play with these guys, getting to bond more, playing for the coaches, having a good season. The least would have to be working out for our crazy Venezuelan coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let sleeping dogs lie. That was well said. Well said. I think. Heath, how about you? Well, this, I mean, this is my third year on of varsity, and, I mean, it's just an honor to play for Coach Hamrick. He's just – he knows what he's talking about, and it's just being around him. Just a, he's a good influence on on me and all the players. Okay. And I mean, the least I mean, I have to go with Colin and uh, Brandon. The workouts are just they're grueling. I don't like them. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, very quickly, we got to go by real quick to this point in your life. Most inspirational person or persons? Uh, probably, um, probably Coach Parker. In the past few years, he's always said, like when rankings come out, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the rankings are as long as you're the last team standing in Montgomery. It makes sense. Uh, most inspirational person, it, besides coaches, is probably going to be my mom. Uh, she's been through three cancers already, 
And she's still going strong, so. We're good. We, we wish the she's, best for your mother. She's definitely been the most inspirational okay. in my life. Colin. He's going to have to be my parents, really inspirational good. to me. Okay. He, I'm going to probably have to say my brother. Okay. Whatever. It, it, everybody's got a reason for it, and we appreciate it. Guys, nice to see you. Good luck this weekend. Bring home a tie. Thank okay? you, sir. Folks, same time, same place next week. You know what Snapper always says? Bicycle.